Number two, three, two, one. Action! <laughs> there you go. No, it's good. It's good. Uh, so, uh, fanboying here today, we've got the lovely Rick English. Um, uh, Somebody that I actually look up to in the film industry and everybody that works in the film industry is stunk. I know you feel very awkward. Right? <laughs> <Don't worry. laughs> but everybody in our industry, stunt people will know of Rick. And if you if people don't know of you, they would have seen your work in Batman and and, and a load of I think you've there's about 170 odd film credits that you have now that you've stacked up over the years. Mm. Does that sound about right? Yeah, I'm that old. I'll try not to make you feel any more <laughs> awkward. Um, so yeah, so super happy that you're here and you come to join us. We've actually done this a little bit before, a few years ago, we'd done an yeah. audio one which never made it out there. Well, let's so release that we're... one instead. Yeah, no, this is going to be better, this is going to be better. Um, yeah, so Amy, do you want to kick it off? Uh, yeah, okay, so I just want to know, um, to me the whole stunt world is a new thing, uh, which I'm loving learning about, so what made you want to get into the stunt world, be a stunt performer, because for me it was never even, I never even considered that that could be a, a career choice, so. What, no, what it's, not, it's not something that comes up at school, yeah. um, really, although, funny enough, um, my parents were clearing out their house and they gave me one of my old like English books or something from when I think I was about six or seven and I'd written in there when I grow up I want to be a stuntman really and, yeah and that was really bizarre but I remember it getting dismissed by my teachers like as if it was uh, like a you know yeah, so a, that's, an that's astronaut or like yeah, yeah it's not it's not a real job yeah. it's a good fantasy job because I remember watching um, stuff like The Fall Guy and um, yeah. Viva Knievel and there's a film called Hooper, which yeah. is a Burt Reynolds movie where he plays a, a stuntman and he's got this really cool life. And Burt Reynolds is a cool guy anyway, pretty much um, growing up he was like my favourite actor. Anything with Burt Reynolds in was like the, the best movie yeah. ever. And, and he was uh, actually a stuntman, hey? A stuntman <laughs> Yeah, he first started off, I think he was like a football actor. player, wasn't he? Yeah. Like an American football player and then yeah. he went into doing stunts and stuff and then um, then ended up playing characters and becoming a, you know... A superstar. Yeah, a superstar actor. So um, I think, yeah, just growing up at that time and, and seeing that stuff, I got it in my head, that's what I wanted to do. But um, because it, it wasn't considered like a, a proper career yeah. choice, then you just kind of get sidetracked into going down the regular kind of school mm -hmm. things and stuff. So anyway, I did all that. And then when I finished um, school and stuff, um, I moved to London to become a PT and to look at getting into films okay. and stuff because I was aware that it wasn't going to happen where I grew up in Lincolnshire. I was going to have to move down to, to London to see, seek my fortune kind of thing. But um, I still wasn't, um, I don't know, it wasn't like I moved down to become a stuntman. I was actually sort of saw myself more doing like, because I was big into martial arts at that time. I started when I was about seven or eight okay. with martial arts. And so I thought that when I moved down to London, then I'd be able to become like the new Jean-Claude Van Damme. Okay. <laughs> like an action actor, you know, doing, um, doing martial arts and, uh, yeah. and fighting for films and, and stuff. Um, and then, yeah, basically I started working at a gym in West London mm -hmm. and used to train a bunch of actors and we'd get directs and that kind of stuff coming in. Was that just a coincidence that you had actors? Uh, uh, yeah, it was, it was just from working in the West End, you okay. know. The gym was in Tottenham Court Road okay. um, and um, we used to get people from Soho, you know, with, um, with memberships there and they used to come to my classes. I was teaching like um, kickboxing classes there and stuff and, uh, and then they started asking me to do bits for their movies and I was like, ah, this is what I want to do. That's cool. And so I, uh, I trained and got on the stunt register, on the British stunt yeah. register. Yeah. Well, that's interesting. So, um, because you started from, well, you, you started to get into the stunt world when doing gymnastics, right? Uh, yeah, I mean, it was kind of, my gymnastics was the base, I guess, and then I, I went off and sort of did live shows, really, and then... Uh, I'd, I'd known about stunt work for some time, but I'd never... It was actually Ben, Ben Wright. He was, he was, I think he was doing Dog Soldiers or a film or something. But like Ben was a PT too. Yeah, yeah, Ben was a PT too, yeah. So basically you were just in a physical... Yeah, exactly. So there's yeah. hope for me. There's hope yeah. for me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think so. Um, I just assumed everybody did gymnastics and then they got into the stunt world. <laughs> no, I did the other, the other way around. I, uh, once I decided that was what I wanted to do, then I, I started gymnastics okay. at that point to... Uh, uh, to kind of help in my physicality and also as one of the kind of requirements yeah. of getting onto the onto the stunt register. What was the first uh, film you were in? The first film I was in? 
Um, it's a great question. Uh, do you mean as a stunt performer yeah. or, um, or when I first kind of moved to London? Because, um, right. like I say, I met a bunch of directors, actors and stuff through, through teaching at the gym. And so I started doing, I did a film called Love, Honor and Obey that the guys always bring up. Um, Love, Honor <laughs> and Obey? Love, Honor and Obey, yeah. It, had a bun it was kind of made by a bunch of um, friends. It was a BBC film um, and it had like um, Ray Winston and... Um, Jude Law and Reese fans and, and you know a really big kind of That's cast cool. and yeah it was cool because I didn't actually know who any of these guys were so we just sat oh. on the dining <laughs> bus and just <laughs> chatting and making a, a movie amongst kind of friends and stuff so I had a little part in that and, and that was years ago then I did a bunch of kind of spac work we call it you know yeah. so it's kind of um, work that's in between extra work and stunt work so it would be like um, it, you know, a bit of background fighting kind yeah. of um, it's like stuff. You won't get put films. into, say, if there's battle sequences, you won't get put into the main, the main, the main thing the with the actors, actors but the yeah. next layer between the background and the extra. And the guys stuff. that are just waving the sword yeah, in, in the, <laughs> in the air. It's, 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 it's <laughs> some, some element of skill involved. Um, my first job as a stunt performer, I think, was a film about an internet killer, and I think I doubled Chiwetel Ejiofor on okay. that movie on a motorcycle. Um, with Kelly Dent on the back, just weaving through traffic, doing some near misses with a taxi and stuff in the pouring rain. Uh, it was for Gareth Milne, actually. Right. Um, uh, sort of guy who used to coordinate quite a bit of TV stuff uh, back in the day. And uh, yeah, it was great. I loved it. And I just felt like, you know, this is definitely what I want to do. You so. do a lot of action work, right? Because <coughs> whenever I see you on Instagram. Doing what? You're Action on a work. bike or you're thrown into <laughs> a I just car stuff. you're coming yeah. off of a car or yeah. into a car. That, that's, that's what we all kind of enjoy um, doing really, um, is the actual uh, performing the, the stunts, you know. For, for me, I like to be busy. I like to be challenged a little bit at work as, as well, you know. Um, it's not about the money. It's not about even the sort of prestige that, that goes with working on movies. It's about um, you know doing something that I feel is um, uh, challenging yeah. for me. Yeah. What, so, so what was the first time? I mean, do you guys ever do this? Do you ever just sit there and be like, "I was Batman." <laughs> <laughs> I was James Bond. Uh, <laughs> do you never do that? Um, I would. I'd be walking around like, oh my god, I'm Batman. It, it like, is pretty the, surreal. Yeah. yeah. Like, there must. Was that ever, what was the first point? I would say that you're just like, wow, I'm doing this. Um, I don't know. I don't remember there ever being one kind of specific time when I was thinking that, but. Quite, quite often at work, you, you're so involved in what you're doing that you're not really considering the big picture of what you're doing. You're thinking about specifically what's happening um, at that time. And, uh, and then every now and again, you know, you'll be sat in your car at once or something and you just look down and you're like, I'm driving the Batman behind I'm like, this, <laughs> <laughs> it's just really <laughs> weird. Whereas 99% whereas of the time you're concentrating on, okay, is the air up, is this in neutral, is this going to start, have I got my belt on? And it's all that stuff. And so the rest, uh, you know, thinking about I mean, a bigger just picture. A glimpse of yourself yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. what yeah. is going on? Yeah, something like that, yeah. But it is literally like that a lot of the time on most jobs for me. I get kind of tied up into what I'm doing and then it's, it's not till afterwards that you appreciate the opportunity that you've been given and, uh, and what a big thing it is and how many people would, would love to kind of change uh, places with you. I think they would. Yeah, <laughs> or, or, or you catch a glimpse of yourself in a mirror at some point, and you've got a really dodgy wig on. <laughs> I always forget that stuff, man. What are you doing? It was the same, like with with the, you know, you talked about the Batman stuff, but I literally spent a year and a half of my life with black rings around my eyes, completely forgetting and forgetting. oblivious to the fact that I have, it, when I haven't got the cowl on, that I've just got these big black like puppy dog uh, rings around my eyes the whole time and. Uh, yeah, you ju you just forget, and like you say, every now and again, you you just be a big double take and uh, and realise so, where you are. So, how was that project? Was it a long project for you? How long were you on the the show for? I mean, altogether, because we had the um, the COVID stuff in between, it was probably eighteen months uh, wow, start to finish, which is the longest I've ever spent on any movie ever. Yeah. After saying that, I didn't really want to do long runs on stuff anymore. Yeah. Um, the difference with that one for me was that. Um, it was so varied in the stuff that was on there. You know, I was I was very fortunate that I was asked to, to drive the car, to ride the bike, to, to the do the fight thing. stuff, to do the wires, to do the yeah. explosions, you know, and it was a big, it was like 
six or seven different jobs in one. That's amazing. You know, so it was it was perfect for me. You know, I, lo yeah. I loved it, and uh, it was properly challenging. You know, yeah. because of um, having so much stuff to rehearse and filming and shooting previews and all this stuff. It's a um, phys machine. Yeah, and it was physically just really demanding because yeah. I don't know if people know about even shooting previews. It's very physically demanding because. It has to be a hundred percent. It has to be hundred percent speed. You're trying to sell that to to the director. If it looks slow or it looks like you're yeah. not putting everything into it, then then that reads and um, you know he he's he's gonna think that that's what the finished product's gonna look like, and yeah. it might kind of uh, you know turn him off from it before you've even got started. Yeah. So it's hard. Like the the previous stuff, it's got like pre visualization basically, and the stunt teams will sort of get involved and. Um, and they'll shoot a sequence, so you're getting the reference that then you present to the director, really. Because it, it's interesting, so from me, I would go, go to the cinema, I'll watch Batman, and I'd go, yeah. oh, this is cool, yeah, look at that fight yeah. scene. You've got no idea, like, what's gone in no. to that scene. Because <laughs> like, I've seen some stuff of yours on Instagram, and I'm just yeah. like, okay, so he's gone on this bike, and then he's just smashed through this door, right. and then you think, well, that's just one take, and then what <laughs> has to go into all of that, like you say, the previs, yeah. getting it approved, then you get there on the day yeah. and get it done. Yeah, I wouldn't want to previous that one. Uh, actually, yeah. Uh, yeah, no. Do you have to it, that is, everything? No, no. It tends to be more of the fight sequences, okay. and they want to get an idea of geography and where different characters are coming from, and how different rigs are going to work. If they want to throw a guy across the room, there, they want to see visually what that's going to look like in the frame. Kind of plan it all so that when you actually turn up on the shooting days, which are obviously a big expense for the company with full, you know, full crew there and everything, then it's kind of ready to go and you've got something to work from, like a, a playbook to, yeah. to kind of work from and it's all been worked out. But some of the previous, I mean, the um, the fight stuff, the, just minor changes all happen and then you reshoot it and reshoot okay. it and we end up with about, you know, 20 versions of a fight, um, you know, to then bring it down to the, the, the one, one version that's actually then seen on the screen. How do you feel when you go to do, I mean, you say there's a whole crew, yeah. and there's everything set up, the expense, yeah. and then you're like, I better do this. Yeah, yeah so it is a lot of pressure. And, and for me also, the, the previous thing has brought something different into the filming now for me, whereas you might have something spot on in the previous and everybody loves it. And now it doesn't mean anything if you don't capture that on yeah. camera, you know, it's yeah. all about what you do in that, in that take when the when the cam when the real camera's rolling and the crew's there and that's what's going to end up in the movie and anything that's gone before that yeah will, will probably never get seen anyway yeah because so, Joe yeah. blogs like me in the cinema hasn't got a clue <laughs> that way. yeah it's, uh, yeah it's, it's and it's quite it's not I'd say it's it's quite rare to to film a previs and then do it shot by shot exactly mm. how you shot that previs so. You know, the stunt team wants to deliver something that's, you know, that they're, they're excited about and the director's going to receive well. But, you know, it's, it's not to say that it will be shot that way on the day. The, the moves will be the same, but, you know, within reason. But then even that can change on the day. Sometimes it's not quite working. And you, then usually. Fly, <laughs> you know, and then you, you compound that with, I don't know, we'll, we'll talk about it now, but like the, so the bat suit, for instance, like yeah. you, you know, the physicality of working within a costume with limited vision. I don't know whether it's heavy or restricting and then you're <laughs> fighting guys, but you've got to be as sharp as you was when you're doing all the other stuff. And then, I mean, yeah, tell us it, about that. Th there's that definitely works. a lot of challenges that come with that, that people um, don't realise. And even as a performer yourself, you don't realise until you get into that situation. I mean, um, I was quite lucky that I came into that movie quite early on and so um, managed to have a little bit of input into the suit yeah. in terms of what we needed to uh, like say to allow the the physicality of the character you know and yeah. we had to put a bunch of stretch panels in in various places on yeah. there just to make sure that you could com complete you know different regular movements yeah. I mean um, what was challenging on there was um, that even with with that stuff in that because of the the suit was so heavy you ended up with a lot of resistance against any movement that you made really. So you're trying to lift your arm up and you'd feel like, okay, that's about a six kilo dumbbell, I reckon, when I'm lifting that arm up. <laughs> you, do you know what I mean? So um, everything is just, is just more, more effort, more work. 
Um, even with the cowl and stuff, you know, it, it's kind of you can kind of feel a little bit closed off with it. Your yeah. vision is slightly limited, peripheral especially. Yeah. You can see straight on pretty well, but any anybody here or throwing a punch here or anything, I can't really see it. Yeah. And the same with it was, it wasn't as much guys throwing punches at me. It was more when I was striking guys or whatever. I had to tell and them, you, I, I can't see you. Yeah, I'm going to put it here. So. Um, you know, try and find it, but not <laughs> not find it <laughs> not with your face. It, it. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it, it's it's all that kind of thing. That um, we did have rehearsal crowd cows, and so we were aware. Um, you know, the guys had probably taken a couple of smacks in the rehearsals and in the previous. They're like, right. um, yeah, so they were aware now. that by the time we got to shooting, they were like, yeah, you know, he's not going to hold back, and so I better keep my my distance yeah. on this stuff. But. Um, it was definitely challenging and things like that movie as well it, it, it they wanted it to take place in the rain like the whole time like every 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 time we're outdoors Love um, in gotham city it's rain. tipping it down with rain yeah and so we had these really heavy rain machines that then had other challenges in terms of um i mean literally when when we did the the first one we shot i think was the train platform fight the first time we see the yeah. Bat batman character and it's just hammering with rain. And it was literally like, as soon as they switched on the rain machines, it was like the ice bucket challenge for like three minutes. It was so oh insanely God. cold. <laughs> and you were to like take a breath in as it, as it kind of saturated <laughs> you the first time. And then you would have to just compose yourself and go through the fight. And it, it, it was challenging for all the guys involved in that fight, yeah. you know. Um, and they, they did amazingly well. I think we had four or five actors and then four or five stunt guys in that kind of train gang. Yeah. And uh, yeah, the actors thought it was really, you know, really funny for the first yeah. two hours. And then, always <laughs> nice and then the following two weeks weren't quite as much yeah. fun, you know. Yeah. Um, but everyone did, did really well with it. So there was challenges with visibility, with being wet, with being tired, with the, the surface being slippery now that you're walking yeah. on. So you're trying to catch people's timings and uh, yeah. it, it, it was challenging, yeah, but yeah, I enjoyable. Think, I think enough. that's half of the job that, yeah. you know, it's, it's, it's constantly adjusting on the fly. Yeah. And also the, the level of expertise of like Rick coming in and the level of the fighting has to be top bar and it has to, has to look amazing. But then you're, you have all of these factors on top. It's not like you've got a lovely comfy tracksuit on and you're yeah. going to be really sharp and everything mm. else. It's suddenly you have all of these all of these things that you deal with, but that's generally stunt work is, yeah. is like but, that. But th this is what I try and explain to sometimes to, to some of the newer performers is that you've got to be, if something you're going to take a job in, you have to be so comfortable with yeah. it because um, like for example, if somebody said to me, can you do a back somersault off of here onto here? I probably can. Would yeah. I take a job doing that? 100%? Yeah. Definitely not. Because I probably can in the gym with my tracksuit yeah. and my trainers. Not when they and give you a, a cloak <laughs> and then they give you a helmet and you yeah. can't see anything. And, and then can you hold this glass of water and this hamster and, yeah. Yeah, and you can't see and you're in high heels and... Um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Well, I don't know why I pointed at you. Yeah, but, uh, that's, uh, yeah. Well, you know. <laughs> I mean, you must have to be pretty mentally strong to like. I think I don't know how I would feel. I'd probably just get there and be like, "Oh my god, are you kidding me? Are you?" Ki I I don't know. You must have got to go through a lot of positive self-talk. I think I would just be like, "Come on, Amy, come on." Um, yeah, I think you have to be confident in your own abilities and and skills and stuff. Um, and, and, and just be aware that the, there are challenges then that come along with filming, that if something's right at the top of your skill level, then um, there will be other things added to it that might just yeah. um, push it over the edge. And then it could be like you're on a night shift. Oh yeah, yeah. Night no, shift totally. And normally the stunts are yeah. left it's to the last, the very last minute. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And for, for me, I don't know if you're the same, but I don't like to eat before I do, you, do something, if yeah. I've got a ratchet to do or a crash yeah. or whatever, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I, won't, I won't eat that even, I won't, uh, or whatever, um, yeah. until afterwards. Yeah, and I'm stuff. kind of the same, nil by um, mouth. And so then, Very yeah, you can get... surgery. It's more about probably throwing up in your costume. <laughs> yeah. and stuff, but, yeah. 
And I mean, the same for like the costume and all of these. Like I guess with the Batmobile, even the, so you can drive and you can dr- you can do all of these things in a car, and then you're given a car which is a very I mean, it's a it's very huge. specific. Yeah. Thing. <laughs> it like was big. Was the, the the first thing that people kind of realised when they saw it? It was like eight feet wide. That car was and stuff, oh and it, it, it looks like a normal sized car until you see a human in it, and then yeah, it's like, like <laughs> is that a really little guy in that in that car? Um, <laughs> Yeah, the, 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 like I say, there's challenges that come with that, and, and everything's, um, that was pretty much like a race car as well, you know, it's very, very sharp, sharp clutch and everything, and you had to be on top of that thing the whole time, and, and also it's filled with, like, special effects stuff, so you had, like, um, air compressors operating various um, systems in the car and stuff, and so that's really noisy, and it'd be kicking in all the time, and you're trying to listen to the radio and do your thing, yeah. and then... You know, a lot of time we didn't have a back windshield in there either, so you've just got noise and, and stuff, yeah. and you've just got to try and stay um, focused on just, what you're doing and not let everything distract you and yeah. stuff. And, and the uh, bike? The bike was a handful, I've got to be honest, on, on the Batman. Um, it was one of those things that it, it was only ever really meant to be kind of seen in Bruce's workshop and everything, and then um, I, I came in at quite a late stage. These things have got to be designed, you know, a year in advance at least to allow, because it was custom made from, from nothing, from a, from a drawing, you know, from, wow. from a designer. Um, and um, it has to be, it can't just be a normal motorcycle, I think, as for the, the Batman one. Um, it, it, it has to be something kind of big and imposing and a bit special, you know, and so it was definitely big. I mean, I could barely no, touched the, the floor and that's it. The wheelbase long, was right? massive. I don't remember what it was, like... but it was about three and a half meters, I think. <laughs> and then, um, yeah, a huge back, yeah. back wheel and back tire and everything, which, which all looked good. The, the biggest thing for me was the footrests were, I think that we, we had a look at the mock-up and they were like 85 centimeters apart. And so um, it, it's, it's, it's a, big, um, yeah. a big stretch even just even, to sit on the yeah, thing, yeah. yeah. And then the geometry was really flat. I mean, the designer liked the look of the whole thing being flat. So like the tail section, the seat, the tank, and the bars were all in a straight line. But to me, that always felt like I was sat almost on like yes, a penny right. farthing, like sat on, yes, on top of the, of the bike and everything's underneath you. You never feel kind of part of it. And uh, yeah, it had some uh, sort of weird geometry issues with riding uh, that thing. So it was challenging, but we, we always knew that it was a, it was a limited, amount of riding that was going to be um, yeah. on that bike, you know, but it, it was definitely challenging and we had we had a few problems uh, with it, obviously, which, which you're going to have. It, it's, yeah. um, it's pretty much gone straight from the kind of design board to, uh, to film set um, with a limited amount of testing, you know, yeah. and, uh, and yeah, we had challenges and uh, yeah, it was quite stressful riding right? that thing. <laughs> yeah. Even just the size of it, you know, it, yeah. it, and the weight of it. It, it meant that yeah, super heavy, um, limited steering lock, yeah. um, limited braking. So resetting limited. back to ones. Also, <laughs> I would give it <laughs> <laughs> resetting back to ones. I would try and give oh. it back to the um, to the vehicles yeah, okay. guy. I'd, I'd just walk. <laughs> <wobble back. laughs> <Yeah>. So <laughs> resetting <laughs> so back to ones is you. You, you finished your take, you stop. So you're stopping. And then as if you're yeah. on the road, it, maybe Rick needs to turn around and then get back to And take to it back to the ones. start mark oh. again. I would just like get off the bike and be like, hey, <laughs> do you want to take that oh, back? Like and, uh, so instead of going, leave it and let somebody else take yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, <laughs> there were, yeah, especially up in Glasgow, there were a lot of paparazzi around at that time as well. Yeah. And it was really awkward to, to kind of turn that thing. It's just really unwieldy and Is everything, you know. Um, yeah, Glasgow and Liverpool, we did the bike stuff. Just because yeah, it's just dark architecture and, and uh, what's that? Because it's, it's dark and raining. raining. It certainly was. Yeah. I think we had like sideways snow the first time we shot. Uh, it was like January in Glasgow and uh, um, got a bit of freeze in blink. a graveyard in Glasgow. Yeah. Well, the rest of I, I was actually quite lucky. They they looked after me pretty well. I felt bad for the rest of the crew who were standing out in that in that thing, you know. Whereas someone would come and give me a jacket in between or whatever. It was all good. Yeah. Um, which led to various memes and stuff as well. On the <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm to find. No, you, you don't need to I, look. I don't need to look, look Actually, no. you can cut that out. <laughs> so when you're Ruin on set and it's like, obviously to do what you do, you've got to be physically fit, mentally fit. So mm-hmm. I know you do a lot of training. Yeah. And you're in the, in the gym a lot, looking after your health, physical, mental. What's it like 
when you're on set? Like, how do you make sure you still get in? I mean, do you still train when you're yeah. when you've got these long days and you're yeah, shooting? Yeah, I, I do. Um, normally, if I'm not working, so if I was at home in my normal routine, I normally train first thing in the morning. I mm -hmm. like to train before eating and I'll get up and, and train straight away and then it kind of sets me up for the rest of the day. I feel strong and I feel loose for the rest of the day. And then I'll go do the rest of whatever I'm doing that day, technical training. So it might, I might go um, to the airfield and practice some stuff or to the racetrack or to, you know, I'll, I'll go do something um, skill-based and, okay. and, and for fun afterwards. Um, at work, it, it depends. When we were in prep, I would always train before work, but you always kind of, um, aware mm -hmm. that your day's going to be pretty physical anyway, mm -hmm. so you you can't you know push, push yourself, yourself. To, to the max. No, nowhere near. I mean, it's more a question of maintaining and and loosening up and and everything ready for the day's activities yeah. and uh, and everything. Um, when we're actually working, I'll normally train in the evenings after work because you've usually got pretty early starts if you work in days. You know, yeah. you'll be getting up at 5 a.m. anyway, probably to go to work. Okay. And so you don't want to get up at 3 a.m. and go yeah. training first. <laughs> so, uh, and it, it's kind of, um, for me, it, it, it makes me feel like I've had another day almost. Like there's that big long day at work and mm -hmm. then you get back to the hotel. You know, and uh, and then I'll go to the gym pretty much after yeah. that, and it just feels like a completely also different day. Nice like I've got some time like to myself. Yeah, totally. From the day, so yeah, you just totally. shift it a.m. p.m. Yeah, still get it in. Yeah. Do you yeah. hear that? Yeah. You do this. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah. At yeah, the moment, I'm training. I train early, so I'm sort of six a.m. six a.m. at the moment, and uh, Amy trains me, and then I get that done, and then I go into into work after. I that. see. Yeah. But it, it does get harder when. When, when like, you're shooting, shooting and stuff, yeah. And then, like recently, there was a lot of prosthetic work, so you're, you're going, <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of prosthetic work, <laughs> which is, you know, four hours yeah. in makeup yeah. before you start your day, and yeah. then you're trying to, you know, otherwise... So you if you're four hours in makeup, that's part of your day, or it's just yeah, it's added on? Of, I mean, it's part of, it's a part of your, your, your total really hours well. in your day, but your, your but, shooting hours will always remain the same because yeah. the crew come in for that, but we just have to get prepped beforehand. So, oh. and then de-rigged afterwards. So, yeah. like prosthetic work is, I mean, it is mentally and it, it is very, yeah. it's draining, it's hard work, you know, and the, and the makeup that they do is incredible and the work's incredible, but it is very hard to, to keep on top of everything, especially when you're doing, if you're doing, 16 hour days mm -hmm. day in day out it's very hard to have anything other than just what you're what you're working on but you know that's where you just got to try and look after yourself do you cope with that well so i mean talking from my own personal ways if i'm in a routine i like to train in the morning then i go to work and you know i've got i've got my schedule yeah then when like something comes in let's say then i'd obviously like be on a film if I was you, yeah. and then I'd be like, okay, now my schedule, it's its not guaranteed, or yeah. I may not fit it in, like that doesn't, I don't like that feeling, because my training is so important <laughs> to me, like do you cope with the change, or the fact that you've got to be flexible? Um, you can say no if you don't cope. No, <laughs> <laughs> no I do, I like, I like to have um, plans and schedules and everything, um, anyway, but I am aware that, that that's, that's, I'm in like the worst job for that ever. So I've, I've kind of learned to just adapt to stuff. And I go a lot on how I'm feeling as well. If I'm really tired one day and we've had a really long day at work, I might literally just stretch for 20 minutes yeah. and not and not bother with any kind of, um, you know, physical, yeah. um, you know, cardio or um, resistance training. I might just literally stretch and, and unwind yeah. and everything and you're try good and relax. At that. Like you'll, you'll just be like, it's just it is what it like is. Adapt into yeah, you, it. yeah, I mean, you, there is no choice really. No. So you just no. sort of deal with it as you go, and just do the best that you can, right? Yeah. Uh, is it? Oh no, Ben's saying keep going. <laughs> do, you do, you, do you do anything for your? What do you do for <coughs> mentally? Do you do any like yoga, meditation? Do you do anything like that, or you just? No. Or you get because for me, I don't. I get it from the training. Right. Yeah. That's that's me as well. Because I I'm a big kind of overthinker. I think a lot of us are. And we, and we kind of have got a million things going through your head all the time. For me, if I'm riding or doing something skill-based that takes a lot of concentration, then that's the only time really when I'm, I've not got a million other things mm -hmm. going through my head. So I'll go out and ride 
um, even just by myself, especially like trick riding or stunt riding or whatever, then um, I have to be 100% just concentrating on what I'm doing yeah. at that time. And, um, and that is the best way to switch off from everything else for me, rather yeah. than just, just sitting like in an empty room. Yeah, such, because yeah. I'm, I'm too distracted by everything else. Yeah. If I, I think if I tried to sit in a room by myself, uh, I'm, I'm terrible. <laughs> I get bored in three seconds. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> yeah. yeah. yeah, it always amazes me, like with Rick, like you, you have your, your skill set at high level is very wide. So you have a lot of skills that you have to, I mean, do you even, do you block out do you go, okay, well, I've done quite a lot of trick riding recently, I need to get in some car, I need to do some cars, or do you, um, do you think of it that way, or do you have No, a, no, not, not necessarily, unless I've got something coming up where I'm aware that it's go. a big driving job or something, okay, and then it. I'll kind of focus more on that, and some of the other stuff will just get, um, sort of, I'll, I'll, I'll kind of, you know, that'll take priority. Yeah. Um, but... Apart from that, I enjoy everything, to be yeah. honest, and I want, I want to keep doing everything, and I want to be as good as I can at everything. And so I try to just um, train across as wide a variety of skills as I, as I can, and that keeps me uh, interested as well, you know. Yeah. Um, I, I get bored really quickly of, any, of anything, yeah. and so I like to, um, yeah, just keep, keep going with a, a bunch of different, of different stuff, and yeah. I enjoy it all, to be honest. So I was actually just thinking, we were talking about Rick and riding bikes, there is actually, so it's, it's funny, sometimes you'll get, you'll do some stunts and they may be, it's called like the cutting room floor, so you, you mm -hmm. never get to actually see it, but you've done something oh. which is really nice. There's a film called Hitman's Wife's Bodyguard. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And then for, I'm sure the people in the sun industry know, there, there is a, there is a stunt that Rick does, <laughs> and I'm actually going to try and find it and layer it over I thought this. you were about to say, I'm actually going to try and do it now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, Definitely not. I'd love to see that. Definitely not. not. We, could, we could grab Ben's bike. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. and, and uh, sadly it didn't make it into the movie. No. And, um, but it's this, I mean, I'll let Rick explain, but it's, uh, it's him going to the back of a truck down, down a road. But... Yeah, the, the idea was um, it was a motorcycle chase and we're chasing um, Selma Hayek's character in this, in this van and um, everyone's fighting over like a briefcase or something and basically um, she's, as we're chasing this van um, what happens is to get rid of some of the bikes the first one she opens the door on and it takes the, you know, the guy goes down the side so they open the door, slam on the brakes and the guy hits the 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 car door and and goes down and so we did that that stunt first of all and then the next day we had to do one where they wanted um, another bike basically they were going to break in the van and they were, the bike was then going to hit the back of the of the van and the case goes through the back doors and that's how they end up with the case um, and so the idea was always to do it in kind of three parts we were going to do like the build up to it first of all, the van breaking, and then the bike kind of almost stopping into the back of the van, like showing that he was hard on the brakes. And then they'd cut out of that shot and then cut to a shot from inside uh, with a, a stunt guy jumping into the window, you know, comedy face <laughs> face on the window <laughs> and fall away. And then the third shot was gonna be kind of starting uh, almost holding on to the back of the van, bike tethered to the back of the van, three to one action, you let go and the, they release the bike and you tumble away and the, the van drives off. So it was always going to be shot in those three parts. And then I think it was only on the day or maybe the day before that, um, that the coordinator had said to me, do you think we could do this all in one, like do it for real? And, you know, I said, well, we could definitely do it. We just have to work out the safest way of doing that. And so with something like that, it's not... It's not just a question of, um, it, you know, it's not just a question of having balls to drive into the back of a vehicle or just, you know, just make up some arbitrary speed to, to ride into the back of a vehicle and hope it all goes well. We did a bunch of speed runs. Um, the van was traveling at like 20 k's, I think, and then we tested different closing speeds of the bike and we we're like, what do you think about that? Uh, myself and, and Rob Hunt, who was um, on there helping out, is a, a very experienced um, uh, vehicle um, stunt guy. And uh, so between us, we kind of came up with a plan of what we should, what we should do. The, the biggest challenge as well was how to hit the back of the van because it was just a real sprinter it was a mercedes sprinter there was nothing padded out on the no, back no it was oh, just really? no <laughs> i didn't know that <laughs> it wasn't a very... like driving 
about it? Do you just go like this and then go? Oh. Uh, well, that, that's the thing. You can... <laughs> I, just okay. I probably I probably do do that actually, but um, but uh, no. The, the biggest thing was that it, it's it's got two big window panels in the back, and these have been shot out already, and so you're just left with this strip of. Uh, there's like metal in the middle that's about this wide. So what I was aware of was I can't ride straight into that because then um, all the impact will yeah. go into, into your head and into your neck. And so normally if you were riding in, into something or hitting a surface, imagine if you're going to get ratcheted into the wall, you'd probably want to twist in and go in on, on your back or whatever to dissipate the load. Yeah. But then what I was aware of was that if my back goes into the center of the door, my head might go through the window. Um, and so, you know, your body's going to get stopped and your head's still going to be traveling at, you know, 30 k's an hour and it's not going to be great. Um, so we kind of compromised and did <laughs> a little shoulder in, a little shoulder in. So you'll see if, if, you, if you see the clip, you'll see that just before I hit the van, I kind of banana left and right a little bit just to put the bike in slightly diagonally. Um, and that also slightly helps you not to just collect the front of the bike the bars and everything with yeah. you, with your legs and um, we had slightly higher pegs on oh, that bike as well raise, raise yeah the so i mean the, the thing is normally if, you, if you're hitting something like a t-bone like on a car or something that's that's this sort of size it it'll stop all the momentum of the bike and then the performer's energy will get dissipated over the the travel over the bonnet or or whatever you're doing the thing is with hitting something like that is that your energy is going to get stopped the same time as the, as the bike's energy, so it's it's quite a big stop um, there. You know the yeah. force is quite big, and so um, yeah, we had, we had high pegs just so I could just get away from the bike a tiny bit. So again, you'll see just before I hit it, you'll see me kind of push uh, yeah. up off of the seat, so I'm not completely sat on the seat, and then um, just tried to dissipate the energy as much as I could through kind of rolling my shoulder and back into it. And how does that, how does it make you feel like, I mean, like you, you watch the playback, you've seen it afterwards, it's been a success, yeah. it looks amazing, yeah. like it looks, and then you know, they put it in the and then, then you don't, you think, oh, here it comes, you know, it's gonna be great, it's gonna, and yeah. then you don't see it. like. A, you know, how does that sort of, how does that make you feel? Are you, is it, are you a little gutted or you moved yeah. on and you're on the next project or? Yeah, I mean, unfortunately it's something that I can't control. So yeah. I just have to, have to let it go. I was disappointed when I found out that the whole bike chase was cut from, from the movie, to be honest. But um, it's hard because as stunt performers, our, our priorities are different from what the director or the, you know, the actors or the producers or whatever have got. We want to make this massive action sequence and make everything, but it might not fit with the storyline or it might have just seemed a bit contrived or, you know, and so they've decided for one reason or another that it didn't, it didn't fit in there. And at the end of the day, we're just kind of facilitating their storytelling. And so much as we'd like it to be this massive yeah. action sequence, it might not have fitted in yeah. with what, what they, their vision was for the movie. So it's definitely disappointing, but all I can do is make sure that everything I do, you know, I perform it as best as I yeah. can. And, uh, give and it. it's also, I guess the other thing that you do gather from it is you gather the knowledge, yeah. you know, moving forwards. Yeah. And you know, it didn't work that time, but yeah. I've got a great How idea we did this thing. Do this did, and yeah, and it's the same with the previous and the fights that, that yeah. don't get used in, in movies, you know, you might have a certain move in there and it wasn't right for this character or it wasn't right for this movie, but you can carry that through with you. I was going to say, because like, how, how, where's the school of this is how you learn to throw yourself into a car? There isn't one, but I guess no. after all the years, you, you're just building up hours and hours of, yeah. of experience yeah. that then that helps you when you get to your next movie. Yeah, like I've done this every job's work, slightly different. You see, every single job's slightly different. Every time you do a ratchet, do a fight, they're all slightly different they've got their own kind of um you know little things that'll just set it apart from things you've done before but then you can draw on experience of mm -hmm. things that you've done that were similar before even if if you you know even if you were new to a film set but had come from a, a racing background if we're talking about motorcycles then chances are you have been on the floor before you have crashed a motorcycle before yeah. you know what happened when this happened, you know you injured yourself because you got tangled with the bike or whatever. See, so you, you draw on all the experiences with that. And it's the same with physical guys, you know, who've, um, you know, bailed out of moves on the trampoline a million times. And, yeah. um, you know, one of the first things 
that guys learn on the on the trampoline really is to to rotate to their backs and stuff especially if it all goes wrong yeah. if you, <laughs> if you get like if you mess up halfway through a, a bailing out and you 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 learn to bail out is one of the first things and so all that stuff kind of stands you in good stead when you do get to a film set and uh, even though you know it's very specific to what you're doing at the time the basic skills always um kind of see you through yeah, I think, I think the, the the other interesting thing about the especially the vehicle stuff and crashing and all of that is you, you may you know it's very alien to crash and even though you know you're That's, doing it even the point of doing it it's your body say, is your telling brain you not, not to, like, do, don't not do, not that. to do it yeah yeah the, the, there is that um moment where you have to overcome natural um instincts and stuff for me, I, I always just look at everything as like a technique, like an ABC, I'm gonna break here, turn here, sit here. I don't actually think about the fact that it's a crash. Yeah. I just think about the fact of when I get to that mark, I have to hit the brake, I have to turn the steering this way, and then, um, and then everything else just kind of happens as a progression from that, rather than thinking about any consequences of what you're doing or, or anything. I just have to have it all sorted in my head beforehand and then just go through the A, B, C, D, and it just all happens. And I think, te te sorry, and I think technically as well, the, the coming off the bike on mission, like yeah. technically that's, you know, that. Yeah. And that, that was a number, right? Yeah. So we did a crash on Mission Impossible five we did a big motorcycle chase on there and i was the last biker to get taken out by tom and um gem generally I, over the years in movies or tv um a bike crash uh, they're all quite generic and quite similar usually guys will slide the rear wheel out and the bike will go to the ground and the guy will slide along behind the bike which is cool and that can look great you know bike crashes i think have got something else over car crashes just because there's two kind of elements yeah. to it. Normally yeah. you'll see the bike make a big yeah. <laughs> a big yeah. shape and bits fly off everywhere. <laughs> and hopefully the, the same doesn't happen to the guy. Yeah. <laughs> but, but, uh, but he's also, you know, there's physicality uh, in there, in a, a body tumbling or, yeah. or, or whatever. Um, and so we wanted to make this one just a little bit different. Um, it's kind of the climax of the chase almost. And so we... Uh, we decided to, to, to do a high side crash rather than a low side crash. So a low side is where the bike will just slip out and, and slide down, like mm -hmm. saying, you say, and the ride will go off the low side of the bike. A high side, you'll let the bike slide and then throw you um, over okay. the top of it, basically, over the high side of the bike. It's, it's quite common in racing when you see guys give it too much gas out of a corner, the tyre will slide and it'll throw them okay. uh, over, over the handlebars, basically. So we thought if we could do something like that, it would be a cool thing to recreate for, um, for the climax of this bike chase. So, um, yeah, so that, that's, what, that's what we did, basically. Yeah. But it's quite, um, it, there's a lot of elements to it, you know. Um, in racing, it's normally done on the gas, so the, um, the guy will like, be accelerating too hard and um, the, the tire will break traction and then yeah. when it regains it grips, traction it will grip and it will throw him uh, over the bars. Didn't really want to do it that way with me riding next to Tom Cruise because if it doesn't break traction and I've just given oh, you know, a 200 horsepower bike a big handful of gas steering towards Tom, <laughs> it, uh, it, it, it won't be the, the best outcome. And so um, the other way that you can make the tire lose traction is to hit the rear brake. And it's obviously a much more predictable um, and a much safer way, way to do that because now you're slowing the bike down, you can say exactly where it's gonna break traction. The second that you hit that rear brake, the rear tire will break traction straight away. So it can be a much more precise and controllable way of initiating this a similar kind of effect. So that's what we did and um, yeah, same thing. I, I, I kind of go through it in my head probably for weeks yeah. beforehand, um, getting the whole sequence in my head of exactly what I was gonna do. Um, Again, it's like the same mental like thing. Mentally, like yeah, because, training. Yeah. You know it's coming. You know I it's know. coming. It's it's it's, it's, it is it is stressful. Um, uh, but as long as I feel like I've prepared uh, mentally and physically and and uh, literally, probably for the half hour before we we did that crash, I was riding up and down. Just kept closing my eyes and thinking, okay, get right, hit the brake, let the brake off. Um, stretch for the centre of the road because uh, they wanted the ideally 
the bike to crash and me to go down the center of the road. So I just felt like as soon as the bike started to throw me off, I had to almost Trend. stretch out. Yeah, the other thing that we wanted was you want to make as, as much as possible from, from the crash. So I was aware that we wanted to you know, make a big shape um, with with the body rather than just let it sort of throw Go. you off in a heat yeah. <laughs> kind I love of crashing thing. Bikes, then you're like, now I've got to act. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, once you've once you've kind of initiated the movement and you've slid and the bike's fired you off, it's then almost the same as doing a ratchet or doing an air ram yeah. or you know coming off a trampoline or something. The bike's now gone. Um, that initiated what's happening, and now it becomes a physical okay. um, kind of movement. So you switch into that mode of kind of dissipating the energy as you land and uh so uh, so it is mentally draining probably like the whole build up and everything and then you say like you get into it and you're just like all i need to do is this 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 a b c yeah so when it all happens and the bike goes and you roll off then what happens you just lie there on the floor you're like oh my god yeah <laughs> well you do you, cool. we you, done it yeah. yeah you do the I'm mental alive. check first yeah. uh here, here. okay <laughs> yeah. no. No, I think I'm good. I think I'm good. Yeah, no, literally, <laughs> literally, yeah. It is literally that. Or else you normally say good just before you check before yourself. You check, yeah, just let the nice spine, just that panics, yeah. then so, go, am I good? Yeah. Okay, no, cool. So good is, yeah, I'm alive and uh, conscious. And then uh, and then you're kind of like, oh, my knee feels kind of funny. Oh, uh, my wrist is kind of funny. Did you tweak your knee on? Yeah, knee it, on it was just one of those, one of those things. It, it, um, my legs kind of rotated over the top and I, I took like quite a hit with my with my ankle and having long legs and long levers like yeah. this it just uh just tweaked my it. knee out yeah so i just um it, it was good i, I managed to to continue and uh and tape it up and ride the rest of the uh the movie and stuff um but i was aware it, it was probably tweaked yeah. a little bit but you can't expect to yeah, throw yourself gonna, at, you know 50 odd miles happen. an hour down tarmac and, and completely get away with it you yeah know, you'd be pretty naive to think that you were gonna just yeah. come away completely unscathed really yeah. so and that was you see you won a taurus award for that yeah you won a so you got three taurus awards yeah yeah stacking them up have you felt them yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the, the kingsman fight is that right yes the ch fight? Uh, church fight in church the kingsman fight. yeah um, it's the same year the other the other Inception? one was Inception, yeah, Inception. back in 2010. In the, in the corridor, is that right? Was that um, part of the fight? There's two, there's two different fights that were sort of combined to win that award. There was myself and the actor Joseph Gordon-Levitt who did a fight in Zero Gravity yeah. um, in one of the corridors. And then Marvin Campbell did a fight against Joseph in the rotating corridor. Yeah, um, such a cool sequence. Though. Yeah, it was it was it was pretty pretty special to be involved with. It's it's like any movie; you don't really know almost what you're filming until you see the movie two years later, and you're like, yeah. "That's what that was all about," kind of thing. They but we like, knew it was pretty special. The whole set builds were, if I correct me yeah. if I'm wrong, that they were built and then hung. And then the performers are hung in the set, and so the corridor, and then they change the angles to look like to, it's to make like it look like zero gravity. Basically, we experimented really... with different ways of of making it seem like the <coughs> the performers were floating, and um, yeah, they, they came up with a pretty um, yeah pretty ingenious way of sort of tricking the eye into into not noticing what wires or anything like that, yeah. in that it was kind of acting not in the regular way of gravity so yeah um yeah so basically the fight takes place in a hotel corridor it's like a 80 foot long corridor and so they constructed a corridor exactly the same and then tipped it on its end so that any time if i'm coming down the corridor towards you pointing a gun at you i'm actually hanging upside down in the um, set looking down at the camera yeah. Um, yeah, and so all the movements were kind of in a different plane. So even any slight, sometimes wires can get given away by yeah, a slight swing or a slight yeah. recoil or something on the wires, but that, that was happening in a different plane okay. to what you'd expect it to. So, um, so interesting for a performer, like interesting it to It was, to yeah. And what, I'll tell you what was difficult with it was shooting reverses of stuff because we could only shoot from the bottom to the top. So, and that way I'm starting at the top and the shooting over Joseph um, at me and we, we shot all of that stuff and then when we had to shoot the reverse and show, shoot over me towards um, him we had to reverse all the door numbers on the corridor and everything oh. and then Joseph had to be at the top and me at the bottom and um, and we had to shoot the fight 
uh, almost back, backwards, so going down instead of up, and uh, wow. it was, <laughs> wow. yeah, it was, it was cool. It was just like two separate um, fight sequences, yeah. Though. But um, yeah, very cool, very good to be yeah. involved with and challenging, which is, you know, what what we enjoy. And one of my other the favorite, which is also the from Kingsman, the church fight, like that fight for me, it, like it's it's incredible. There's a lot of a lot of our friends were <laughs> involved in that, and it's a crazy yeah. fight, and it was like it's I think one of my favorite fights. I think. Oh. Yeah, that That's was fun. Funny. It was fanboying, yeah. <laughs> yeah, there was um, so, so many, <laughs> so many um, kills involved in that in that fight. Eh, that you say we had a limited number of stunt guys, and they're all playing like five or six yeah. different characters yeah. and different wigs. And uh, Greg and Damo and Ruda yeah. and, and Jim and Jim like, Harris all of them and just yeah. like just you could see them. If you watch it and watch it closely, you can you can sort of pick out a lot of people. Same guy with a different wig and moustache <laughs> yeah. and oh, <laughs> crazy. Yeah. Well, I know which one you're Good talking about because I've seen a picture of this, if you're saying wigs and moustaches. Yeah, I know which one. Well, the um, the fight just goes on and on, and that was kind of the charm of it almost was that it was so it, violent but comic book violent yeah. because it just you know it's just kill after kill after kill after kill after kill, and it just it all all means nothing. It's not like I don't know. It, it doesn't seem super gory or super violent yeah. just because it it's so ridiculously. Um, yeah. I think <laughs> violent. The, I think the Marvel production. I think them as you know, they do push their push the boat out with all of that. You know, with yeah. the cast and all of the oh films, yeah, yeah. films that they do, like the violence that they create and the creativity that they actually film is yeah. is is really cool. Yeah, it's nice to do something that's just slightly different, and uh, it was definitely challenging. And Adam Curley played a big part in actually organising. That stuff as well. He was he's so organised and so yeah. cool as a as a um, coordinator that he he would say where every character had to be and then at, when we do this next scene, then that guy has to get back into this costume and he worked all that stuff out and yeah. I don't know how he did it. I won't be, yeah. I won't be able to <laughs> do like, that. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, Honestly, I could sit and talk to you too for a long time. Um, okay, Rick, I see you on Instagram every day, working hard, working hard more than me. Stalker. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, or uh, someone's yeah. posted too much stuff and maybe yeah. one of the two. Um, you don't do CrossFit though, do you? What no. do you do? Um, no, I, Not that you I kind of like the idea CrossFit. of CrossFit, but um, it seemed like I've, I've never really been into the class um, exercise thing because... I've always felt like I need something bespoke to my to myself, you know. I don't want to be going into a class and then suddenly going, oh, I can't do that movement because of my arms, so I'll do this instead. Yeah. And I can't do this because of this, so I'll do this instead. Okay. So I've always felt like I, I would be a bit of a pain in, in the CrossFit thing. Although I like the idea of other people doing the same stuff yeah. as you and being able to kind of push each other and measure yourself against yeah. other people kind of thing. So I, I'm not saying I'd never do it. It's... Um, I think it would have to be the right place where um, where we had had stuff that I could manage to <laughs> to do that fitted in with the with the way I train and stuff. Um, no, I, t I tend to train a lot more these days based on how I'm feeling, what I've got coming up, mm -hmm. if I'm carrying any injuries, or if I'm trying specifically to work on something. I try and do a lot of functional kind mm -hmm. of training. Um, when I was young, um, probably did more bodybuilding type training you know mm. four sets of 10 on this exercise for okay. shoulders this but whereas these days i'll try and think about movements that i need to do my job and um you know a lot of stability work and stuff to help joints and also to help uh tricks and stuff on the bike sometimes you don't realize it's it's quite physical some of the trick riding and stuff you you're standing on one leg and you're almost doing like one-legged squats a lot of the time stuff okay. without without Realising, yeah, and so you have to to just train in a slightly different way. Do you write your own training programme or do you have a trainer that, like, would no, write, I, I, write, I, look I, at what's coming up and then adapt your training to that? Yeah, yeah, pretty much. And look at, um, yeah, if I know that I've got a hard day at work tomorrow, then I won't blow my arms and legs out today. Okay training i'm always aware of what i've got of what i've got coming up but um, you write yourself what yeah you do. yeah and i kind of decide when i'm in the gym sometimes i'm like right i'll do a whole body most days i'll do like a whole body circuit but resistance based mm -hmm. so i'll just be you know doing a chest exercise a back exercise a leg exercise, and trying to get you know a whole body resistance workout 
um, every, every day pretty much. I'll add some cardio to that. Normally most days I'll do five or six rounds on the bag as well, which is good cardio for mm -hmm. me. And also um, it's, it's technique as well at the same time and just drilling um, movements and basics in fighting stuff because I still really enjoy doing fighting although a lot of people think that I only do bikes and stuff now um, fighting's kind of where I started into okay. into movie stuff and uh, and I enjoy that just as much I wouldn't want to just do bikes you know same as I wouldn't want to just do fighting I enjoy do it, you know the challenge of doing everything so um, so I try and keep my techniques up in, in that as well so incorporate that into my workouts What's your favourite cardio machine? Uh, favourite cardio machine? Um, it's a good question. Ski erg, I think. Hey, that's my favourite. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> it's kind of my favourite and also my most hated. Like, um, a love hate relationship. Yeah, I love yeah. A good ski erg. I can, yeah, I kind of get stressed out. I think we were talking before. I get stressed out just before I do it because I know how hard it is. Yeah. But then once, once I'm into it, I'm just looking at the numbers and just trying to, trying to keep going. What's your highest watts? On a ski egg, do you know, like you I don't know. No, we don't. Oh, I don't know. We don't. We don't do that. But we, we between myself and some of the other um, stunties and bike racer guys, uh, we do challenges of like 500 meters for time, yeah. or like 100 meters for time if we're not. Feeling <laughs> <laughs> if we're not feeling as energetic. You, two, you guys should do it. You should start doing your cows per hour. Cows per hour, like is that how, what it's like? How big your, you your pull, pull is. Uh, okay, yeah, I was watching, is it James? Uh, who's got the record for the ski erg? World record 500. I don't know. Uh, I can't remember his name now, but he's a big dude and yeah. uh, it's ridiculous. Yeah. We had I reckon he does it in about five pulls, uh, like 500 meters. <laughs> <laughs> five pulls. <laughs> we had Magic on last week and he does, what does he do? Magic Johnson. No, yeah, Magic Nor Norbert. Um, the MMA fighter, but he does his ski erg, what, it was three minutes or something for a thousand meter ski. No. Yeah. Three minutes for yeah. a thousand meters? Yeah. And I think that's in shoot. They have to do it, London in shoot, shoot fighters. fighters. Oh, in London I shoot fighters, is that where is that? He's got the title, I might be saying it right here, I think he's got the title for the ski erg in shoot fighters with all the So they have the, the, these benchmarks that they have to hit before yeah. they even get, like his 5K is like 18 or 19 minutes. And then his ski erg is like three minutes, and they have all these benchmarks before they even step in the ring. Wow. I know. I don't. I, I think my thousand ski, meters my thousand ski erg is challenging like, when what? you're not going for time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's true. Yeah. It's so true. But even ref, like the other day, the, or the boys at, at Game Line, they did, I think they were pulling like two, uh, the two, and two and a half. For what? Cows an hour. That's like his. Exactly. I'll I mean, have to, I never do the cows now. It's just like, how, how hard can you get it? And then once you get there, it's like for 10 seconds. Yeah. I'll have to have a look. Yeah, you have to go home now. Yeah, I'll have to try that. that. <laughs> yeah. So you train gym, your wife's a PT. Yep. Um, and do you, are you a part of an MMA gym or anything? No, um, still part of a Thai boxing gym. Um, I, I try and get there when I can. I've been with like, um, it's called the Nolsey Academy now. It used to be minor tours before that. And it's always dependent on kind of where I've lived as to which um, sort of martial arts gyms. But since I was, you know, small, I've always been been part of a, of a you know, a martial arts gym and that. Yeah. And uh, I was obsessed with it when I was young. It, it, a bit like anything for me, I, I was there seven days a week, you know, mm. I just couldn't, couldn't get enough of it. Um, these days I have to fit, fit it in around, um, around work and other training and um, yeah, it, it's difficult. But uh, yeah, I still try and get up there whenever I can and I, I, I like things like that too. I like getting privates there or whatever to, to improve my own technique, you know. You can, you can get sloppy without realising it and just develop odd little bad habits and stuff and it's nice every now and again to get someone to check yeah. your technique and to kick your ass a little That's bit. That's what I mean, especially if you train on your own. Yeah. In your gym or yeah. out at a public gym, it's sometimes good. I mean, that's what I get from CrossFit, because I can program all of my own stuff, but I know if I just keep programming and programming, I'll never program the stuff that right. I should be doing. Right. Or yeah, it is, my weak it is spots. good. So it's sometimes good to get to a class or, yeah, have a coach to just yeah. keep an eye on you. And it's the same for me if I go to a racetrack, if I book a, a track day or a track training session, with the bikes or the cars, I'll always make sure I get one instructor session in in that time, get an instructor to come around with me and they can just pick up little habits. And uh, yeah, it never it never hurts really doing that. I, 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 I do it all the time, I love it. Do you do a lot of mobility? Um, 
I try to. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do you mean like like functional yeah. mobility exercise? Like, like, do you go into a gym and stretch for yeah. like thirty to forty minutes? No, <laughs> I don't have thirty no. to forty minutes to stretch. No, that no. Um, I always stretch before and after. Okay. Um, or it's at least do some kind of mobi- <laughs> mobility kind of um, stuff. At home, I've got um, cool functional kind of uh, apparatus that helps me with that stuff as well. I've got. Do you know what a skill board is? It's like a, a surfboard with a basketball with underneath. Ball. Yeah. Yeah. So the, there's a company with the handlebars. Oh yeah, prep. Yeah, yeah. That, they're a really good company actually, and that's a very specific training exercise for most cyclists or mountain bikers and stuff. Is yeah, it's like a, a set of handlebars, literally exactly what you would use on the bike, and then it has a cammed um, section in the middle. So you're doing push-ups or any kind of uh, stability exercises, but you're always stabilizing through this handlebar position and you're doing push-ups through that position or, um, you know, you can attach weight bands and stuff to it and uh, and do everything, but always work in these same exact positions that you'd be using on the bike and stuff. So um, I find stuff like that really interesting and I, I like playing with that and coming up with different challenges and exercises and stuff for that. Yeah. Um, and your nutrition, how do you, yeah. how do you fuel yourself? How do I what? How do you fuel yourself? <laughs> I fool myself. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I, I've kind of gone back and forth on, on nutrition uh, in the past. I always look at, look at stuff and try and evaluate it for myself as to, as to what makes sense. And, and I feel like nutrition's evolving all the time yeah. and different ideas are coming out. So I'll have a look at them and evaluate them. Um, I didn't eat meat for probably about seven or eight years. I went completely like vegan, didn't eat eggs or um, drink milk or, or any of that stuff. And um, now I've gone back I'm more kind of pescatarian now. So okay. I eat fish yeah, again fish. now and I eat eggs again now. Um, it just came from being away with work and um, what's available. And I, I, I'm, I'm big into eating naturally. So I don't really like the idea of eating over processed yeah. um, food or you know anything that, that seems uh, more unnatural I'd rather go for food that seems real yeah, and as natural as possible and yeah um, and so I, I kind of weighed it up and just felt like we were out in Croatia working and it was like the best place in the world to get fresh fish that yeah. was like caught that day or whatever and I thought we just don't get any more natural yeah. and that so I'll give it a try and see how I feel and uh, you know I felt good so I've, I've c- carried on with that yeah. now. What's your go-to fish? Uh, <laughs> What's the go-to fish? The go-to fish, I like white fish, I like something yeah. like, yeah I like sea bass or something like that yeah. is, a, oh, is bass, a good thing. Good. Yeah sea bass is, a good, is good. I mean everyone goes to kind of salmon as well but then I, I'm wary again of, of, of toxins Mercury building up even in uh, even in fish and stuff. So yeah, it's hard. You can't eat anything or drink it's funny, anything. I was vegan anything. once. Yeah, I was vegan for about two uh, years. Oh wow! I thought you were going to say two days. <laughs> <laughs> no, about two years, I was vegan. Yeah. And then I just woke up, and I didn't actually feel. You great. just woke up. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, didn't, I didn't really feel great, but because I've got, I've got quite a big appetite, so I think right. I was just eating like volume of chickpeas. Of carbs. And then oh, right. I was like, this is really That's not doing th- me yeah. very good. Yeah. And then so I woke up one day, I was like, I'm going to eat meat. And I remember I went to the shops and I just brought all of this meat. So it's kind of and all I came or nothing. Home and I was like, yep, yeah, that's it, we're eating meat for tomorrow. <laughs> and I actually went completely the opposite. Yeah. And I went like paleo. Right. So I don't eat a lot of grains. Right. The only grains I really eat is oats. Yep. Um, and I actually feel so much. But and my I, point being, it is very individual. I think I it is. Yeah. As I'm I think it is. As food, and yeah. it's individual. Because vegan for me, oh my God. You did not want to be around me when I was a vegan, but when I switched, I now I've been paleo for about five, six years, That's and it's the best I've ever felt. Uh, yeah, but it is I think you have to see what work what works What's for you. For yeah, because yeah. when I first stopped eating meat, people said, "Oh, do you feel better for it?" And I was like, "Well, I felt okay before, and I still feel okay, so yeah. I just kind of keep going." Yeah, um, if I'd have felt like low energy levels or anything like that, I think I would have stopped a lot earlier, but I just carried on because I was like, I feel okay. But then I was just wary of the amount of processed stuff that mm-hmm. that you end up eating, especially if you go out somewhere or at work or whatever, the, the, the vegetarian or vegan option is, is not always the most 
yeah. healthy, you know, exactly. it's not always the most natural kind of thing. You end up sometimes with a lot more processed stuff yeah. um, than if you were just eating a, you know, piece of beef or fish with, or whatever. Yeah, with you vegetables. Know. Exactly. Yeah. It's hard to know. What are you? <laughs> well, I, I mean, I eat meat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, and fish and vegetables. So, I mean, I just, you know, that it's not but fussy, it, but, it, but it varies. Like, sometimes, I mean, I don't, I don't eat meat in every single meal. Like, I yeah. try and cut down the amount of red yeah, meat. Yeah, like, I don't you know, have, like I don't every have week, a, I'm not going to have. Yeah, no, I don't, I'm not like that, you know. Like, I, it's, it just varies. And I try and do, you know, not eating meat at least a couple of times a, a week. I mean, that kind Honestly, of falls that way. That. So, yeah. You are? I don't do that. I don't have meat three days. I don't even think no. about things like that. No. Yeah. I, uh, but I used I, to. Before, I used to think, okay, two times a week, I'm not going to eat meat because it's good for me. But I don't, I'm not like that anymore. Yeah. I just eat clean. Yeah, yeah. I, I always kind of liked... I ne originally, I never kind of stuck to one idea because there's a lot of different ideas about yeah. nutrition. And I always kind of looked at which ones I thought made sense to me and then tried to generally stick to it, but not 100% yeah. stick. Like people saying, eat stuff with only one ingredient or whatever, not stuff where stuff's mi mixed together all the time. So I, would, I was like, mm, well, that kind of makes sense a little bit, you know. So if you're eating, you know, apple, carrots, they're, they're all just yeah. one ingredient. Whereas if you're eating, I don't know, pie and Got whatever, it. then it's it's yeah. it's a it's a bunch of stuff yeah. all mixed together. And I was like, that kind of makes sense. That kind of enables you to eat cleanly yeah. a little bit. But I would just keep the idea of that rather than sticking 100 yeah. percent. No, I can't eat this. I can't eat eat that. Then just generally don't eat as much sugar. Don't eat as much processed stuff. Yeah. Try not to eat too much yeah. dairy. Try not to eat too much this stuff. And that's that's always kind of the way I've I've looked at Is it. Is your all. family like that as well? So yeah. It's yeah, my wife's be been vegetarian page. like since she was like at school, like okay. fifteen, or whatever. My my kids eat pretty clean, I think, as far as um, you know. No, <laughs> <laughs> no, as far as compared to other oh. people their age, um, <laughs> they're both into training, and so they 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 look at nutrition. Um, and from having myself and my wife, yeah, be like that in the household, then um, it's. It, you know, they've always been around that kind of thinking. And so they're, they're pretty good 90% of the time, which is, you know, which is fine. I think that's what everyone's got to do. You've got to, got to do what's best for you and enjoy uh, enjoy food as well. You and know? just make do good they, choices, eh? Hey? Yeah. they think their dad's really cool because he's a stuntman? <laughs> no, I don't think so. I don't know. It, I'm it's, sure they do. I mean, you, so don't, do. you don't walk around being like, oh, I'm the Batman. I mean, at least they might walk around being like, my dad's the Batman. Now, you, you, I remember my, my son was really little when we did the first um, uh, Batman Begins. I think, I think he was only like three at the time or something like that. And he knew that that's what we were working on. I think he thought that was pretty cool. But it's it's all he's ever known really since he's been little. And so then I remember I did like the Harry, Harry Hill TV burp or something about 15 years ago. And then he was oh, can I tell my friends that you're in Harry Hill? And I was like, what? So that was my claim to fame in his classroom, I think, apparently, was Harry Hill rather than uh, Avengers or, uh, you know, Ghost <laughs> yeah. Rider or any of those movies that we did before. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Hey, look, mate, it's been know. amazing to have you come down, and thanks ever so much. No, it's, it's been, always been nice to, to chat. See you, mate. Always good to see you. Always. Wicked. Thank you very much. Cheers, mate. Nice, buddy. I'll nice give you a hug. Cheers, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Another one down. Oh. Give us a clap. <laughs>